Hey guys, <clears throat> um, Mr. Hanley here. Uh, this chapter is basically over. I just this will be my last video. Um, my last video before sending the test to you guys. Um, if you want some time today, if today is Monday that you're watching this, um, we can. You guys can message me. We can do a Google Hangout if you really want to. If you have any last questions before the test, um, but. Uh, this test is not is not heavy on the math, um, and it's the only math is going to be Coulomb's law, I believe. Let me look at my test really quick. Yeah, I'm going to have two Coulomb's law problems on there. And that's the only math. There's going to be a lot of you know critical thinking questions like the ones at the mastering concepts and applying concepts at the end of the chapter. There's going to be a lot of questions like that, just discussing charges. I'm going to ask you things about. Um, you know, conductors and insulators, you know, let, let me let me kind of go over a few things. And I have one other thing to tell you about Coulomb's law. Actually, you know what, let me deal with that first, and then I'll talk about the test. So the one thing I forgot to mention about Coulomb's law is when you do a Coulomb's law problem, like for instance, on the homework, when we did 9 and 10, if I can find them, when we did 9 and 10, um, most of you got 16,000 as your answer to 9, because you put in negative two um, times ten to the negative fourth, uh, and um, positive eight <clears throat> times ten to the fourth is your numbers. You basically put let me put these on here negative two times ten to the fourth and positive eight times ten to the negative fourth. This is what you put in for your values for uh, those numbers because that's what you are given in the problem. It says a negative charge of negative 2.0 times 10 to the fourth and a positive charge of positive eight uh, times 10 to the negative fourth coulombs are separated by. So it basically was telling you these things. The one thing with Coulomb's law is that you do not need these leading positives and negatives. I'll tell you why in a second. You do not need these. You do need them here. You do need these. If it's 10 to the fourth or 10 to the negative fourth, that's a very different thing, right? Uh, uh, think about it. 10 to the fourth is uh, like 2 times 10 to the fourth is 2 with four zeros behind it. That's 20,000. 2 to the negative four, 2 times 10 to the negative fourth is 0. 0.0002. That's very different. If you had $20,000 or if you had 0. $0.002, dollars, it's a very different thing. But negative 2 and positive 2 are really the same amount, but just in different directions. The reason why. This is important. The reason why the, they, they tell you a negative charge of this or a positive charge of this is because it tells you what will happen to the particles afterwards. Are they repulsed or attracted to one another? Okay, Because, as we know, um, opposites attract and like charges repel. So once you look at that, it says a negative charge of this and a positive charge of this. Take that negative and positive off. Do all your math out. Basically, make them absolute values. Do all your math out. Come up with an answer, and then you can tell from your answer. You know, and the answer would be 1.6 times 10 to the fourth, right? So 16,000. 16,000. Oh, you guys did have it right. Oh, huh. That was 10 to the negative fourth. Anyway, I want to mention that. Make make sure I mention this. So. You come up with an answer, which is actually is sixteen thousand. I just wrote on all your homework that it was wrong because I thought it was. I looked really quick. I thought it was one point six times ten to the negative fourth. Anyway, forget forget that. Forget what the answer is. It's just important that I tell you this. You take off the negative and the positive from it, and you multiply them together, and then all it tells you is you get an answer that the uh, particles are attracted to one another or repulsed. And how you tell if they're attracted is if they have opposite. Signs to start, and they're repulsed if they have negative signs to start. So, if I mentioned something on your homework that you had the wrong answer, I apologize. I wasn't looking at the right answer. I was just kind of doing the math out quickly, or, or doing the math out mentally in my head, and I thought sixteen thousand was the wrong answer. I, I was thinking the other direction, um, but it's good to know anyway. I'm just kind of realizing this now as I'm doing the video. But make sure you know it for the test, because on the test, just take off the positive and negative from the front, and just make sure make Make it so that they're absolute values. They're just, you know, two times ten to the eighth, and you know, two times ten to the eighth, or sorry, two times 
10 to the negative fourth and negative 2 times 10 to the negative fourth are both going to be 2 times 10 to the fourth, negative fourth, right? And then you put that, and then all you have to do at the end is just tell me whether they're attracted or repelled, because I'm going to ask that too. Are they attracted to one another or repelled? If for some reason that wasn't clear, because I agree that I really didn't make that very clear, uh, you can ask me again to restate it. But anyway, getting into stuff for the test. Um, what you're going to need to know for units, you're going to have to tell me what charge, um, what the, the abbreviation for charge, which is lowercase q, and the units for charge, which is coulombs. Coulombs, C O U L O M B S, with the capital C, and the, uh, the abbreviation for Coulomb is just a C. <clears throat> you are going to have to label various things, conductors or insulators. You can find a list on uh, one of the pages, I think, like 544, and also I talked about it in one of my videos, I can tell. Um, you can have a, a triboelectric series. I'm going to give you that little diagram, triboelectric series, and I'm going to give you two things, and you're going to have to tell me on there whether they're attracted or repelled from one another. Um, you're going to have to know all four things on all four listed things on page 546. You're going to have to tell me those four things. I may not state them exactly as that page has them, so make sure you know essentially what it's saying. Uh, and then I'm going to ask you a bunch of um, bunch of conceptual things. I, I think I went over everything. Um, the only thing I didn't go over that I can think of is uh, on page 550, uh, the last thing that I didn't go over because I spent so much time on Coulomb's Law, is um, the elementary charge. What the elementary charge is, it's the title of something. Because different things can have different charges. The elementary charge is the charge of one electron. Uh, the reason why it's called that is it's like the simplest, the simplest amount that you can have, like the smallest, essentially, um, the, the essentially the smallest charge amount of coulombs. Because think about it, charge is um, what is what charge is on the microscopic scale is um, is electrons being transported, a certain number of electrons being transported, two, three, four, five, and you can't have Electrons are quantum matter, quantized, which means they're whole number. You can't have half an electron. You can't have a quarter of an electron. So it has to be one whole electron. So the smallest amount that can be transferred would be one electron, right? So the elementary charge would be the smallest amount of charge that can be transferred, which is one electron's worth, which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. That's a decimal point and 19, 18 zeros, and then a 1 6, right? That's very small. It's the smallest amount, it's that many coulombs. And it's the smallest amount of coulombs that can be transferred. You can't have any smaller than that because you can't transfer any less. You have one electron that was transferred. So that's what the elementary charge is. Um, I think everything else I've gone over. Um, I'm not going to go over the short answer stuff because I've gone over it in my videos. Um, you may use your notes for the test. Um, and uh, good luck and may the odds ever be in your favor.